Welcome back everyone. My today's lesson is about primary lymphedema. Lymphedema arising from a developmental abnormalities of the lymphatic system is classified as primary lymphedema. This form of disease is divided into the following three main types, which are distinguished by their age of onset. And these types are as follows. Congenital lymphedema, lymphedema precoce, and lymphedema tarda. Uh, these conditions involve the lower extremities almost exclusively. All are caused by a congenital abnormalities in the lymphatic system, although these defects may not always be clinically evident until later in life. When a triggering event or worsening of the condition causes the lymphatic transport capacity to exceed the volume of the interstitial fluid formation, and in such cases, the patient is unable to maintain the normal lymphatic flow. Uh, Primary lymphedema also can be associated with other cutaneous and degenerative disorders, not among the three main uh, age-based categories. Uh, the first one from uh, primary lymphedema is congenital lymphedema. Congenital lymphedema or mineral disease accounts for 10 to 25 percent of all primary uh, lymphedema cases. A familial autosomal dominant disorder is often caused by anaplastic lymphatic channels. And the disorder manifests at birth or later up to the age of one year. But most of the time it is seen within the first few uh, months of life. Females are affected twice as often as males and the lower extremities are involved three times more frequently than the upper extremities. And the edema is most commonly pitting and it is non-painful. Patients might have bilateral lymphedema and this form might improve spontaneously with uh, increasing age. And unilateral lymphedema is not noted uh, in Milro disease. Uh, this is uh, an image of a patient with uh, congenital lymphedema. Uh, the age of this uh, newborn is around 28 days. Congenital lymphedema has also been associated with cellulites, prominent veins, intestinal lymphangiectasias, afternate tunnels, and dirosel. Also, congenital lymphedema is classically thought to be caused by the failure of lymphatic vessels to develop in utero. Examination of patients with this disease by fluorescence microlymphangiography demonstrates a high rate of functional failure of the lymphatic system, which might contribute to the formation of edema. Congenital lymphedema might be linked to a mutation that inactivates uh, vascular and arterial growth factor receptor 3, and this gene is. Uh, well expressed in adult with lymphatic endothelial cells and it's mapped to the telomeric part of chromosome 5. From primary lymphedema, the second one is lymphedema precox. Uh, lymphedema precox, also known as MEG disease, is the most common form of primary lymphedema. By definition, this disease becomes clinically evident after birth and before age of 35 years. And the condition accounts for 65 to 80% of all primary uh, lymphedema. Although 70% of cases are unilateral, with the left lower extremity being involved more often than the right, uh, females are affected to four times as often as males. The fact that lymphedema precox usually manifests clinically around menarche suggests that estrogen might play a role uh, in its pathogenesis. Uh, the third one is lymphedema tarda. Lymphedema tarda manifests later in life, usually in persons uh, older than 35 uh, years of age, even though it's primary, it is thought to be caused by the defect in lymphatic valves resulting in incompetent valve function, whether this defect is congenital or acquired is uh, difficult to determine. Uh, as the rarest form of primary lymphedema, this disease accounts for only 10% of cases. Histologically, patients are likely to demonstrate a hyperplastic pattern with tortuous lymphatic increase in caliber and the numbers. Uh, when we see associated conditions, with primary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema is seen in association with various cutaneous and genetic disorders. Uh, Dyskiasis lymphedema syndrome is a form of hereditary early and late onset lymphedema associated with dyskiasis or double row of eyelashes. And affected persons usually manifest bilateral lower extremity lymphedema by age 8 to 13 years. And it is a hereditary condition with autosomal dominant pattern with variable penetrance. Other associated anomalies might include verba, uh, vertebral anomalies, spinal arachnoid cyst, hemangiomas, cleft palate, ptosis, short stature, webbed neck, strabismus, thoracic duct abnormalities, and macrophthalamia. Uh, primary lymphedema has also been associated with yellow nail syndrome, and this entity might be associated with recurrent pleural effusion and bronchiectasis. 
other genetic syndromes and the cutaneous conditions associated with primary lymphedema include Turner syndrome, Noonan syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, neurofibromatosis type 1, hemangiomas, xanthomatosis, congenital absence of When we see approach consideration or treatment considerations, the goal of lymphedema therapy is to restore function, reduce physical and the psychological suffering, and prevent the development of infection. Uh, initiate therapy for lymphedema as early as possible before extensive reversible fibrosclerotic changes occur in the interstitium. Uh, strict compliance with treatment techniques is essential, even though they are often cumbersome, uncomfortable, inconvenient, and time-consuming, with treatment lasting throughout the lifetime of the individual. The majority of compliant patients can be treated successfully with conservative measures. And in secondary lymphedema, always we should have to address the underlying causes. A few pharmacologic therapies have been found to be effective in the treatment of lymphedema. Uh, for example, benzopyrons, including coumarin and flavonoids, when combined with physical therapy, uh, they are successful against the disease. Diuretics are not effective in the treatment of uh, lymphedema, so we should have to avoid using diuretics as a treatment method for lymphedema. Uh, the first one from conservative management is compression therapy. Patients should use compression garments continuously during the day. They might remove the at night when the extremities is elevated in bed, but they should be replaced promptly each morning. To encourage compliance, the elastic compression garments must fit appropriately, and the garments should be custom fit when extremities is decompressed. They should be comfortable and they should not have a tourniquet effect. And they should also have graduated compression that increases from distal to proximal on the affected extremity. Uh, the other management technique is pneumatic pump compression. Intermittent pneumatic pump compression therapy might be instituted on outpatient basis or in the home. It provides sequential active compression from distal to proximal, uh, effectively milking the lymph from the extremities. This treatment is most appropriately used uh, prior to fibrosclerotic evolution, which it assists in preventing. And contraindication to intermittent pneumatic pump compression includes congestive heart failure, deep venous thrombosis, and active infection. So if there is DVT or active infection or congestive heart failure, you should have to, you should not use pneumatic pump compression. Uh, the other is manual treatment techniques. Uh, this is the best available in surgical therapy in uh, our setup for manual lymphatic drainage. Compression garments are essential between treatments and manual massage of the affected extremities. And this re recruits collateral vessels allowing the accumulated lymphs to be drained into neighboring regions with normal functional lymphatics. Uh, the other is pharmacological therapy. Uh, first, first of all, uh, we should have to treat and prevent cellulites. Even with excellent skin care, chronic cellulites may occur, and as the earliest sign of infection, we should have to institute topical or systemic antifungal or antimicrobial therapy to prevent the development of sepsis. And long-term prophylactic treatment with antimicrobial agents uh, such as penicillin, cephalosporins, or erythromycin may be required in up to 25% of patients experiencing recurrent lymph uh, lymphangites or cellulites. Uh, the other is benzopyrons. When combined with complex physical therapy, benzopyrons, including coumarin and flavonoids, are a group of drugs that have been found to be successful in treating lymphedema. Uh, these drugs bind to accumulated interstitial proteins, including macrophage, phagocytosis, and the protolysis. The resulting protein fragments pass more readily into the venous capillaries and they are removed by the vascular system. The benzopyrons aid in decreasing excess edematous fluid, softening the lip, and decreasing. Uh, skin temperature and also reducing the number of secondary infection. Uh, of note, however, uh, those drugs are hepatotoxic and we should have to uh, follow them appropriately. Uh, the other is physiologic and excisional surgery. Surgical treatment is palliative and it's not curative and it does not avoid the need for continued medical therapy. Moreover, it is rarely indicated as a primary treatment modality but it's instead reserved for patients who do not improve with conservative measures or for cases in which the extremity is so large that it impairs daily activities and prevents successful conservative management. Uh, lymphatic covenular anastomosis surgery might be used to reduce lymphedema severity in selected patients. In general, surgical procedures are classified as physiologic or excisional. However, many physiologic techniques include excisional components, making it difficult to distinguish between the two uh, approaches. Uh, 
physiologic procedures attempted to improve lymphatic drainage and multiple techniques have been described including omental transposition buridermal flaps enteromesenteric ridging lymphangioplasty macrovascular lympho uh, lymphatic anastomosis and rarely venous lymphatic anastomosis performed in patients with severe lymphedema and the functioning venous uh, system prophylactic lympho venous anastomosis have been performed in a patient undergoing extensive pelvic lymph node dissection who have high risk of developing lymphedema uh, so thank you for your attention and don't forget to subscribe thank you